water from the Jordan River. Baptism. Remember, it's yours, and be thankful. Good morning and blessings to each one of you that is here today that braved the weather to be here. We welcome those on Zoom, our Zoom family, and we welcome those that attend by uh, YouTube. I am Pastor Carrie Cameron here at First United Methodist, and I'm so glad you're with us. Um, today, we remember our baptisms as the first step into the shared family of God. Because COVID numbers have risen rapidly, we will maintain our six-foot social distancing, and that's why the pews are once again taped um, as a precaution. We need to be safe. Um, we won't be singing. However, the words will be on the screen to all the hymns, so feel free to either hum or speak the words quietly from your pew. Those of you that are joining us by Zoom, you need to sing for all of us. So we, we are going to be watching to make sure that you are singing loud and strong. Let us pass the peace to one another. Hold up your hands, reach out, look to each other. Offer that love and that peace that comes from Jesus Christ. Bless you all. I invite you to stand as you are able for the call to worship. God is with us always and calls each by name. When we pass through difficulties and stress, God is with us and calls us by name. When we are discouraged and feel lost and alone, God is with us and calls us by name and heals us. Blessed be God who knows us and calls us by name. Amen. Please be seated and enjoy the music. Gather us in.
together we have gathered in, and today we pray together the words found on the screen. Lord of hope and light, in the midst of darkness you offered light to people who lived in fear. Today that light comes to us as we celebrate the baptism of the Lord. Open our hearts this day and remind us that you have marked us as people of hope and light. Prepare us to serve you by serving your world. Amen. And now let us close our eyes and hear the beautiful music of Come to the Water. We aren't inviting the children to come forward, but we want to remind our children that Christ's light follows them everywhere they go. And when it seems dark some days, they can bring their own lantern to light the way for others. Let us say together the words of this little light of mine. Together, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Blessing to our children. And now for the word, Kathy will be bringing it this morning. morning. Our first reading is from the book of Isaiah. 
chapter 43, verses 1 through 7. But now, thus says the Lord, He who created you, O Jacob, He who formed you, O Israel, Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overcome you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flames shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in exchange for you. Because you are precious in my sight and honored, and I love you, I give people in return for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east, and from the west I will gather you. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from far away, and my daughters from the end of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. And our gospel reading this morning is from the book of Luke. Sorry. And it is from third chapter, verses 15 through 17 and 21 and 22. As the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary, but the chaff you shall burn with unquenchable fire. Now when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O most holy one, we can feel your presence with us this morning, and perhaps it's because we have been silent. Perhaps we move about so much that we can't see you and we can't hear you. And so this time has become a blessing, I pray, for each one of us that we might hear your voice strongly this morning. Bless the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts this day. May they be acceptable to you, you who are our strength and our redeemer. 
Amen. In Luke's Gospel, we hear people wondering when the great Messiah would come and save them from the bonds of Roman government. And then suddenly they hear John the Baptist crying along the Jordan's edge, thinking he might be the one. John confirms he is not, but he does deliver a message of hope. One more powerful than I will come. In Isaiah, God is addressing a whole nation, but the words he uses are as if he is speaking to each individual member of the community. You are precious in my sight and honored, and I love you. Each group of people struggling daily through waters that could overwhelm them, through flames that could consume them, through pain and sorrows and fears and anger and disillusionment. And God finally cries out to them and promises, do not fear. I have redeemed you. I have called you by name and you are mine. Just let those words sink in. Do not fear. You are mine. I think of these words today as we enter the third year of the pandemic. Like the people of old, we too are searching for Christ or searching for someone to bring good news and move us out of our misery. There's a wonderful story by Max Lucado that goes like this. Once there was a man whose life was one of misery. The days were cloudy and the nights were long. Henry didn't want to be unhappy, but he was. With the passing of years, his life had changed. His children were grown, the neighborhood was different, and the city seemed harsher. He was unhappy, and so he decided to ask his minister what was wrong. Am I unhappy for perhaps some sin I have committed? Yes, the wise pastor replied. You have sinned. And what might that sin be, he asked. Ignorance, came the reply, the sin of ignorance. One of your neighbors is the Messiah in disguise, and you have not seen him, the minister said. The old man left the office stunned. The Messiah is one of my neighbors? And so he began to think who it might be. Tom, the butcher? No, he was too lazy. Mary, my cousin down the street? No, she's got too much pride. How about Aaron, the paper boy? No, he's too indulgent. The man was confounded. Every person he knew had defects, but one was the Messiah? He decided to look for him in earnest. He began to notice things that he hadn't seen before. The grocer often carried the sacks to the cars of the elderly women. Maybe he was the Messiah. The officer at the corner always had a smile for the kids. Could it be? And the young couple who just moved next door, how kind they are to their cat. Maybe it's one of them. With time, he saw things in people he'd never seen before. And with time, his outlook on life began to change. The bounce returned to his step. His eyes took on a friendly sparkle. And when others spoke, he truly listened this time. After all, he might be listening to the Messiah. When anyone asked for help, he responded, after all, this might be the Messiah needing assistance. 
the change of attitude was so significant, someone asked him why he was so happy. I don't know, he answered. All I know is that things changed when I started looking for God. Now that is curious, he thought. The old man saw Jesus because he didn't know what he looked like. The people in Jesus' day missed him because they thought they did. In the waters of baptism, God marks us as one of his own. And it is here we can see Jesus and meet Jesus for the first time. And once there, as long as we continue to build up the relationship, we do not lose sight of Jesus. It's when we let go that we have to go searching for Christ. Let us not forget, we are a spiritual people first. And it is through our baptism, our spiritual lives that connect us with Jesus, that we begin to emerge as Christians. We begin to form as Christians. And we grow as we weave ourselves into that shared life in the family of God. We no longer walk alone. We no longer make decisions just for ourselves. And we no longer live alone in isolation. This morning, you turned around and looked at one another. Do it again. Look at one another. You are not alone. Together, we are the body of Christ. And we have an exciting day today because we are having two more people join us in the body of Christ. Linda Hansen is coming forward for baptism and profession of faith as she joins this church and becomes part of our family. Harry comes forward this morning with a profession of faith to join this church, this body of believers. And to that I say, hallelujah, praise God, the Holy Spirit has descended in this congregation. Harry and Linda have seen Jesus in this building. In each one of you, the shared body. And so, we are going to remember our baptism and the vows that we made. going to invite Tom to come over and begin to play Breathe on Me, Breath of God, as Linda, Harry, and Maggie come forward.
brothers and sisters in Christ. Through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. Today, I present to you Linda Hansen for baptism. As well as she and Harry Knowles making a profession of faith and joining our church. And so I ask both of you a few questions. On behalf of the whole church, I ask both of you, as baptismal vows and profession of faith vows, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this work, and repent of your sins? Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church, which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? According to the grace given to you, will you remain faithful members of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representatives in the world? And now to the congregation. If we can have the next slide, Corey, thank you. Do you, as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? Will you nurture one another in Christian faith and life and include Linda and Harry now before you in your care? With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround Linda and Harry with a community of love and forgiveness that they may be grown in their trust of God <laughs> and be found faithful in their service to others. We will pray for Linda and Harry that they may be true disciples who walk in the way that leads to life. Let us join together in professing the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments, and the people say, Amen. Amen. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again, he ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Linda, I'm going to have you come stand right here, if you would. Yeah. Let us pray. Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. And the people say, sing to the Lord all the earth. Tell of God's mercy each day. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and appointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to the nations his glory among all the people. And now, almighty God, I can face him. Yeah. pour out your Holy Spirit on Linda. Pour 
out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water. May it wash away her sin and clothe her in righteousness. Throughout her life that dying and being raised with Christ, she may share in his final victory. All praise to you, eternal Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns now and forevermore. And the people say, Amen. Linda, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. May the Holy Spirit work within you that being born through water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Harry, you want to come over on this side? Harry Knowles, bless you. May you remember your own baptism and be thankful. May you remember the vows you spoke this morning. May the Holy Spirit work within you that having been born of the water and the Spirit, you too will live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Linda and Harry, as members of Christ's universal church, will you be loyal to the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries? If so, say, I will. As members of this congregation, First United Methodist Church of Burlington, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, and your service? I will. Through baptism and profession of faith, you are incorporated by the Holy Spirit into God's creation and church. You are made to share in Christ's royal priesthood. We all are one in Christ Jesus. With joy and thanksgiving, I welcome you as members of the family of Christ. And as new members for, of the household of God, I commend Linda and Harry to God's love and care and your love and care. Do all in your power to increase their faith, to confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. And now let us pray for them. We give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love. As members together with you in the body of Christ and this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, and our service, that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, and we welcome them into our home. And before you go, may you accept these prayer shawls as you begin your ministry here at first. And we thank you, and we are so happy you are a part of us. But before you go, we have one more um, thing we have to do. Miss June, would you be willing to come forward, please? I can hold that for you. Maggie. They can't hear you. Start again. Go ahead. Oh, there we go. Sorry about that. Practice makes perfect. <laughs> Maggie May, this is January 9th, 2022. You first came to visit in May of 2021. In the short time that you've been with us, you have been a regular attendee. 
You're friendly, you're welcoming, you're loving, you're well-behaved, you're accepting, and very patient. Friends come to greet you, and you leave your pew to greet others. Today, we commission you as our new cuddle minister puppy, as part, <laughs> as part of our new healing ministry. We give you these sweaters in liturgical colors for you to wear and to enjoy as you continue your ministry. Blessings from June Way and your church family at First United Methodist Church in Burlington. Thank you, thank you. Woo! Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for being with us, Maggie. You bring us such joy. She might need help carrying that back up. I'll carry that. Okay. We have this. We have this pic. We have this picture of Maggie that we will try to <laughs> update when we have a pic, a real okay. picture of okay. her. Okay. But okay. this is one of her friends. Great. Thank you so much. Once more, let us welcome our new family. Tom wants a picture. I guess. We are smiling, by the way. <laughs> Bless you. I'm going to invite Liz to come forward now. No, you can, you can go back to your seats. Thank you. What a celebration to keep adding to our prayer ministry and, and to expand the beloved, so we're here rejoicing. Um, I, I stand here on behalf of the healing ministry team, and uh, we, we want to continue to uh, support everybody in uh, a variety of ways of being in prayer for each other. Um, in that, I want to read from uh, the Gospel of James, chapter 5, verses uh, uh, 14 and 15. Is anyone among you suffering? Let them pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let them sing praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the, pa and the prayer of faith will save the one who is sick and the Lord will raise him up. We continue to um, follow the Spirit in how we are holding each other in prayer. And um, we will um, need to change some of the things that we do on our healing communion service rather than moving around the sanctuary to different stations and praying for people. Um, we want to do this in a COVID safe way. So I just want to explain a, um, how we might do that differently on this pedestal. We have um, our candles, and if there's someone um, that you have in mind and on your heart that in particular needs some healing prayer, uh, then we invite you as you come forward for your communion to take a candle, and you can just turn it on on the bottom, and then place it on the rail, uh, the kneeling rail here, or on the other side, and um, we will be holding you in prayer. Um, the other way to do that, too, is in the back of the church after service, we continue to lift people up, and there's an, a place for you to uh, list their name, and um, if, if it's appropriate to do so, because we want to keep confidentiality, but God knows who we're, pr who we're praying for. We also invite our people on Zoom to um, continue their practice of being in prayer for people who need healing, and Carol Jean is there to pray with people in a confidential breakout room. And there's also an opportunity for you to put prayer requests in the chat. So these are the ways that we will continue our healing ministry together. So was they gonna do Judas oh, prayer? And we're gonna uh, pray. And then this is, um, as you know, every month we have a healing prayer and Judith Bailey writes these and they're inspiring and 
um, a, a wonderful way in our daily devotionals to, to keep this uh, in our forefront and pray for each other. Um, if you did not get a card, the ushers can, can give one to you, but I'd like us to read this together. And so, do we have, it's not on the screen. It's not on the screen. Okay. So those of you who do have it, if we could read it together. Dear Lord, in this holy season of coming to us with childlike innocence, we turn to you for the promise of healing with childlike expectations. Open our very souls with the healing touch of your very presence among us. Inspire us, therefore, to live out your gospel of love, healing and peace in our every encounter, and blessing this day. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Liz, and our healing ministers and the work that they are doing behind the scenes, praying and just trying to discern how God wants us to continue to grow this incredible ministry that it started in the midst of COVID. It is a holy day indeed when we celebrate our two sacraments together. This morning we remember the sacrament of our baptism and we witnessed Linda's as we partake in the sacrament of communion, one celebrates birth and a new life, and the other our continued nourishment and growth as we live into all Christ calls us to be. When we approach the front table, we remember. When we approach the font, the bowl of life, the water. We first renounce the power of wickedness in our lives. And so we confess together. Nourishing God, you tell us not to fear for you are with us, but we are so full of fear that we cannot love you with our whole heart. We use the freedom and power you have given us not to resist evil, injustice, and oppression, but to rebel against your love, to hurt our neighbors and ignore the cries of the needy. Cleanse us of our fear. Feed us the courage to put our whole trust in your grace. The Holy Spirit has not abandoned us. We are still God's beloved, and the Holy Spirit continues to work within us. We remember our baptism and are thankful. And now we come to the table, for God continues calling each of us by name to bring, into, bring us into the fullness of new life, the life we glimpsed at our baptism. We offer ourselves anew to God, listening for the guidance of the Spirit. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. In the beginning, darkness covered the face of the deep, but you swept over the face of the waters and brought forth abundant swarms of life. And you blessed them, seeing that it was good. You watered the face of the ground and formed a human creature from the dust and mud, breathing life into it and leading it to life in a garden. You created a second earth creature, so it would not be alone, and man and woman were created. But these earth creatures, these humans, turned their backs on you and were expelled from the lush garden. Yet you did not abandon them. You do not abandon us now. 
Throughout our history, you have come through the sustenance of water and bread to call us back to paradise. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water, and after the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea and then sustained them with manna, bread, that covered the desert like dew. Their children you brought through the Jordan to a land flowing with milk and honey. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You told us when we pass through the waters, you will be with us. You told us that you love us so much because we are precious in your sight, you will redeem us. You saved our biblical ancestors and us through water, but the story never ends there. You continue to nourish us through the fullness of time, sending Jesus nurtured in the water of a womb. When he grew up, your spirit descended on him like a dove proclaiming his belovedness as he emerged from the water. He began his ministry preaching new life because the time of redemption had come. He healed the sick, he fed the hungry, and he ate with sinners. Yet so many feared and still now fear the new birth he offers all of us. We reject the fullness of the feast he gave to us, and so we turned our backs on Jesus on the nourishment he offered, and we gave him up to die, even after sitting at the table with him. On his last night with us, Jesus sat at a table and fed his disciples as he feeds us now. He took bread, he blessed it, and broke it. He shared it with us, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. When supper was over, he took the cup, blessed it, shared it with us, saying, Take and drink. As often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. The cup reminds us of the new covenant, a covenant by water and the Spirit, in which God reminds us again of our belovedness and calls us to new life. And so, in remembrance of these gifts, the mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as holy and living sacrifice, in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and those who receive it. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make these gifts, the water and the meal, redeem us again by washing away our sin and filling us with good things. By your Spirit, incorporate us into God's new creation, making us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until we come again to the table, cleansed of all hatred and sin, to welcome all people in joy and thanksgiving as members of the family of Christ. May your spirit work within us, that being born through water in the spirit and fed through Christ's body, we may be faithful disciples of Jesus Christ. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray for our daily bread, 
praying the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you now to come forward for the cup that saves us and the bread that sets us free. And again, Liz re, um, reminded you that if you would like to put a candle and pray for somebody, you can leave it right there on the altar rail. So I invite you to come forward now. body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. You can do both sides if you want. Okay, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Richard, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Carrie, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Daryl, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Bob, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Bless you, Catherine. Carol, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Dan, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Chuck, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mr. Smith, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Sally, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. John, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Liz, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Sue, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hans, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Steve, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Carol, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The God of all grace, who has called us each by name as beloved, establish and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you may live in grace and peace. Let us be in a spirit of prayer. Lord, you know 
what is in our hearts. The words we don't say aloud, the tears we shed for ourselves and others. You know us, and we thank you for making us precious in your sight. We lift to you those who are suffering from COVID, family members and friends. We pray for nurses and doctors and administrators in hospital settings across the world trying to keep up with the virus and remain safe. We pray for our children, those that are moving back to school and those that are moving back to virtual learning. We pray for their teachers who are trying to maintain a sense of peace and balance. We pray for Jan and Ken, who had some health issues this past week. We pray for Elliot and his mom as Elliot tries to work out safe living arrangements for her. We pray for those who have lost jobs, that better things might be coming. We pray for those who are cold, wandering, or lost. Guide them, O oh great Jehovah. We ask for ourselves that we remain calm, that we consider others first as we live into this year with hope rather than with fear or trepidation. We pray for those whose pets are suffering. We pray for those who are alone and isolated from the world. We pray for Gabriel, who needs strength, more strength than he's ever had before to move beyond addiction and temptation. God, in your great wisdom, you knew we would need each other and your gift of baptism. And it was that that brought us together. It is our baptisms that have kept us together and will always remain as the tie to keep us connected both with each other and you. Thank you for the gift of Jesus' baptism as example for us. Thank you, thank you, thank you. In his most beloved name we pray. Amen. Shared life in Christ Jesus, we have received God's gifts beyond measure. And today we offer gifts for the keeping of the mission to help those distressed, to help those suffering, to help the unclothed, to help the hungry, and to help the lonely. And so as you reflect on the many gifts that have been given to each one of you, may you consider giving a gift in return. We have offering baskets at both uh, entrances to the church, and you can go online to UMC Burlington dot com and click on the giving banner and we thank you and together let us pray the doxology we have been joined as those who have been richly blessed we are confident that we too can be a blessing amen life this week is our normal conversations with the beloved via zoom um, and book studies, and Thrift Shop is going to be closed for the month of uh, January as a COVID precaution, um, and also Sunday school will be put on hold to the end of January. Um, after church today, for anyone who can stay, we're um, degreening the church. Um, sadly, we it's time to put our Christmas decorations away, and but... The night of Christmas Eve, I hope, will remain in your hearts for, for some time. Um, again, as you leave, be careful with social distancing and so forth. Um, I invite you to stand now as you are able for the closing prayer. And then we are going to be um, listening to Wade in the Water. Now, that's not going to be easy not to sing. So, so sing it softly and... Uh, Clap, use your body, whatever you need to do to make it come alive for you, okay? So let us pray together. Today, we remember our baptisms and we are grateful. We remember all the faithful communities who through their baptisms went before us. Let us rejoice that we share this new life. Amen. Tom?
of hope and peace go into the world. Bring God's healing love to all whom you meet. Help with ministries which promote justice and compassion. In Jesus' name, go out and wade in the water. Amen. <laughs>